All right, awesome. We're live. Shabbat shalom. Shalom. Aloha. I love when the activation readings align with Shabbat because it's extra fun and just feels extra powerful because Shabbat is a ritual for the unification of the worlds within and without. So it's a time of transcendence of duality back to oneness. So yeah, that's a very powerful energy to be in. And then to do these activation readings is next level. So we had the new moon last week and it was a really clear beginning, I feel. As far as where we were starting off, what energies were present, it was all about the Virgo new moon and the energy of bringing order to the chaos in every dimension. So we initiated this cycle for this month last week in a way where we became aware of the opportunity that is present and that is so supported by source energy, spirit, great spirits energy, where we are now in our individual lives and as a collective consciousness reorganizing our thoughts within the universal mind. We're reprogramming individually and collectively in a way that ends a negative cycle of thinking, which then creates a negative cycle of manifesting because thoughts lead to things uh, once and for all. Ending that once and for all. And so we are accessing those Virgoan energies in a way that helps to support that process to do our best to remember why we're doing it. Why are we doing that work of bringing order to the chaos? What is it really for? To serve, because Virgo is about service. Serving who? Serving what? The one of which we're all a part. So that was all the new moon last week. And now here we are a week into this month's process. So it's the first quarter. So what do we want to know about this point? What's coming next week? Next week is the full moon, so by then we'll have the fullness of the picture and we'll know what to do from there. We'll integrate that information. But we're not there yet. We don't have all of the pieces to the puzzle. We just are one week into this four-week cycle. So what do we want to see right now? What do we want to know? What can we... How can we collaborate the best with these allies in the forms of archetypes, these archetypal energies of the tarot deck? How are we doing so far? How are we doing? Are we doing a good job at making order of the chaos? At surrendering to divine order to allow that to reflect into our reality because that's really that was the message behind it all last week it's not just about you know making the order out of the chaos but about surrendering to a divine order which ultimately is at the root of all things and in that surrendering finding the perfect method to make the order out of the chaos allowing it to Reveal the order that was always there to begin with. And then really realizing it's just about adapting to that. Surrendering and seeing the pattern that was always there and will always be there. And working with that. Working with nature. Not working against our own design. So how have we been doing? Have we been doing a good job in surrendering? How can we surrender more? All right, so when you're ready, and feel free to ask questions as I'm pulling too, because your questions will be interwoven into the reading. So when you're ready, just connect to that space, the place of timelessness, where in that space we're all one, and that's where I'll meet you. And then when you're ready, go ahead and connect to the deck however you wish. Imagination is key. So do it, do it in a way that's going to feel best for you, in a way that truly makes you feel connected to this moment, to this deck, to this community that is showing up and tuning in live for this activation video. 
So you can see a golden thread or a rainbow thread going to the deck, from the deck to your third eye, or from the deck to your heart, wherever you see that, however you feel that. Alright, thank you in advance. Faces of the One. How have we been doing? What is our, what is our current struggle that maybe some of us are struggling more with and some of us struggling a little less but what is that what is the current challenge that will be turned into the gift each time we stay present through it and do our best what is that so our collective challenge as well as individual because as with one so with all okay so that's the challenge and the ally for forward movement Hmm. Okay, and what's the, the task, the next mission that we're moving to, and what's it all for? Okay, the, ch the current challenge for the collective, so of course the individual as well, is the Nine of Pentacles. This card has come up in the last three readings that I've done um, for myself. So I definitely resonate with this card. It has come up for a couple of readings I've done for others over the last two days as well. So this energy is very present right now and this is the current challenge and it's the Nine of Pentacles. Pentacles is the suit of the material world the earthly plane and nines are endings we want to move to the ten which is the ending with the beginning to follow okay so the the nine is just about the ending where we get to next the ten is the ending and the new beginning so it's a, a true completion a new beginning because the beginning is implicit in the end so right now we're just focusing on the ending of a cycle here on this material plane. And right away I feel like what this card is saying is there may be some difficulty letting go of ideas or visions that we've had as far as what true fulfillment looks like on the material plane. Perhaps there are some things that still need to be looked at some desires that need to be analyzed. What will bring us that true completion? Which, when you consider the image of completion, you can consider the ten. What comes after the nine, the ten, the ten of pentacles, which is, on the ten of pentacles, is a picture of a family, a happy couple, a grandfather, two children, and a dog, and there's a there's a tree made out of the pentacles and it's showing prosperity an image of prosperity and how that light of prosperity it lives within and when you're truly pro prosperous on the inner realms then that carries through all the way to every realm including this physical one the material plane and so true sustainable prosperity health happiness abundance all those things can only come to you in a sustainable way if they are truly aligned with your highest good, if they are truly aligned with nature and source of which you are a part. And so the nine, before we get to that true vision of sustained prosperity, first we have to ask ourselves if the way, the ways that we are achieving that success or our successes or what we judge to be success are pure this is all about how good do we feel about our accomplishments. And if we feel so good about it, then there shouldn't be any feeling of incompleteness. And if we're paused here, which this is the challenge, so obviously this is, this is relevant here. If we're pausing here, 
It's because it's time to understand that the next step is the Ten of Pentacles, which, by the way, was all over every reading in the last cycle, if you've been following these videos. So it's like we, we were on our way to manifesting that, but now we're being called, we're being challenged, we're being called to pause and make sure that before we get there, in fact, we won't be allowed to get there until we do this work. Before we get there, we have to really pause and ask ourselves if everything we're doing, we feel good about. Because this is it. Everything that we're doing now is going to determine how sustainable our prosperous manifestations are. So no shortcuts. No cutting corners. Maybe you have the things that you've always wanted and you feel so grateful. You feel so grateful for having those things that you haven't stopped for a moment to consider the situation around it. That maybe even though you always wanted that thing, you don't really want it anymore. Or the way that you got it isn't the most... Isn't, the, isn't really something to be proud of. Isn't really the most righteous. You know, so it's really about seeing those accomplishments we have, uh, feeling into those accomplishments that we feel we ha haven't made yet, and asking ourselves, why do we have the things that we thought we've always wanted? Or why do we want the things that we don't yet have? What do we want? And why do we want these things? Especially in terms of what we believe to be prosperous, prosperity, because that looks different to everybody. I mean, ultimately, true prosperity and the only thing that can really be sustained in the most righteous way as far as prosperity is health and happiness. Because anything that you believe is, is a vision of prosperity, is a manifestation of prosperity that can't be taken with you beyond the grave, that's not... That's not the, the highest star to shoot for, you know what I'm saying? And besides, if you aim all the way, if you go for all the way, and you say, I'm going to aim for only those things that can, can support my eternal prosperity as a collective consciousness, so I'm going to aim straight for health, happiness, and abundance every day, instead of all the little things you know, that I've been wanting, then you got to know that those most basic things that are true prosperity, that will be sustainable across lifetimes, across time and space, those are the things that will dictate the rest of your reality. So for example, instead of asking for like an actual material item, if you ask for abundance, then don't you think you'll get that thing if it is in alignment with your truest abundance, your authentic abundance, and what it really means to be abundant as such a beautiful, multidimensional spiritual being as you, as you are? So if you just aim for those, those three things alone even, happiness, health, and abundance, if you just aim for those, you've got to know that your soul will vibrate at a frequency, your whole being will vibrate at a frequency that will not allow for anything else. And so therefore, if whatever things you thought you wanted are in alignment with your highest health and your highest happiness and your highest abundance, then you'll get those things. And whatever needs to come for you to maintain those, those beautiful things, your health, you wouldn't be here without that. You will get those things. You will have those things, whatever it is you need to, to maintain that state of just thriving health. So this is our current challenge right now. What has our vision of true prosperity for one and all been? And remember, that's, we're about to get there. So know it, believe it, see it, and know that every moment right now that life is offering you, every moment that you're rising to meet with your presence is giving you this opportunity to move to the 10 in the highest way, to make sure that you know you're moving forward, it's inevitable, and so when you take that step into the 10, how beautiful is the manifestation of your vision of prosperity going to be? And in what light? Is it going to be beautiful in, in you know, the eyes of the material world? Or is it going to be beautiful from the eye of the one? So pause and remember that each moment is offering us the opportunity to reflect on this as simultaneously 
we create that, that next dimension of the Ten of Pentacles. Each time we face those moments, we're creating a part of the future, of what is to come of the Ten of Pentacles. So it is in our evaluation and in our pausing that we connect to that frequency where we're able to clearly manifest the future. Okay, so that's the current challenge, Nine of Pentacles. Our next project, actually first I want to pull the ally. Okay, oh yeah, this came up yesterday as well. A lot of, um, a lot of eights, a lot of eights for you numerologists out there have been coming up lately, the past couple days. So the eight of wands, wands is fire, it's spirit. And the Eight of Wands is all about signals and messages of spirit. And we're transmitters. We receive and we also give messages. And all things come from spirit. So everything then can become a message, depending upon our perception of it. How much of a shamanistic consciousness do you maintain? Can you see everything as a symbol, a message? of the same one thing, because it all is a message of the same one thing, but it's just fragmented. So, Signals is our ally as we move through this Nine of Pentacles challenge. Looking for the signs, which usually come in, in feeling, right? I mean, it, it's in everything, but especially in these human bodies, we have the ability to feel. So when you feel not so great, even when it seems like you have manifested that vision of abundance. You got that thing, or you got that house, or your relationship's going really great, or whatever it is, but for some reason you don't feel very good inside. Something feels off. Then that's a sign that you need to go deeper with that. That that's something you need to explore before we move to the future where you manifest a vision of prosperity because if you're holding a false vision of prosper prosperity if you've been lying to yourself and that's what that feeling is trying to tell you then you need to listen to that and you need to look at that so just follow the signs feeling what are you feeling when you're around those manifestations when you're around those things that you've acquired or when you're sitting in your own material success how does that make you feel all of the signs. Because right now, there, are, because we're going through this as a collective consciousness, there is always going to be universal support because this is the intelligent design of our nature. Our growth is so supported. And so underneath us, deep inside, deep inside, we're being supported in a way that our subconscious is giving us signs and signals when something's just not quite right. Okay, it's like a, a helper, a guide that's deep inside and it's saying in the form of these messages, could be in feelings, could be in whatever, a flash of light that you see, could be in a tree, it doesn't matter. So pay attention because that's the support we have right now. We have to do it ourselves. We have to rise to the present moment. We have to activate our presence with our will. And we have to do the work, but there is that guidance there, and it's in the form of signs. And like I said, feeling, visions, however you receive the signs, just pay attention. Okay, the next mission, and we have our Major Arcana card. Number one, the Magician. So this is our next mission that's coming up, why we're preparing for this. And we are preparing to obviously go on a very powerful mission because the Magician is a major Arcana card. And so we're learning what I see about this energy right now in particular because we have the Magician within us always. In each moment, he is a, a major archetypal energy that we're using whether we know it or not. Simply by just being humans, we are this, we're walking this middle path. We are that Magician. We are here playing with the elemental field. That's what the true magician is. The only difference is, you know, between 
between one person and the next, the only difference is how are you embodying that archetype? How consciously or how unconsciously are you embodying that? Because it's within all of us. And so I see that we're, we're preparing for this next mission to be more familiar with the magician archetype. That's what it always is. Each time we go on a mission where we're meant to further cultivate archetypal qualities of any one particular archetype, it's... It's always the same thing. It's the same qualities. They're innate. We're even born with them. We're one with them. But these missions are just to get us more familiar with each of them, to settle into their energy more and more so that we begin to understand them, so that inside of us these arch archetypes can cooperate harmoniously and move through us, uh, reflecting as a harmonious life experience for each one of us. And so right now we're preparing to step into that journey that's going to involve cultivating the archetypal energy of the magician. So it looks like right now is a time where we're really aware that we are the ones manifesting that vision of abundance. We're trying to really follow the signs and tune into our intuition to make sure that we're not manifesting a false idea of what prosperity is. And then when we really get it, when it really clicks and we get to the Ten of Pentacles and we have the idea of the truthful definition of prosperity for one and all, which ultimately is connection to source, because the source is what provides our ultimate health, our survival, our abundance, our infinite abundance, and our happiness, our sustainable happiness. We don't have the best health or happiness or abundance until we're fully connected to source. And how do we connect there? Through understanding our innate connectivity. Just simply acknowledging it. And that we're all connected. And so that's what the magician is about. One hand up, one hand down. Knowing where we come from. Knowing that infinite source we're connected to. And one hand down. Knowing that we are the vessel for that energy. That lightning force. That divine light. To come in and through and back out. And onto this material plane. We are not that source alone. But all together. All together now. We are. And so that's what the magician knows. The magician knows that his true power lies in his connection to source because when he maintains his unity consciousness, when, when he maintains his awareness of oneness of all things, including himself to source, that's where his true power lies. The second he starts to think it's only coming from himself, he disconnects from the worlds above and, and below. He disconnects from his purpose, why he's even here, the middleman. What an honor to be the middleman. But he forgets, right? And so the way to cultivate the highest energy of the magician card, or the magician archetype, is to use him as a reminder. Allow him to be your ally, to guide you. That you are this. You are this, so open up to this. Why would you want to forget in any moment that you are the magician, that you're connected to this all-powerful source? And then the other part of it is, and it's revealed in the colors that he's wearing here and in some of the symbolism here, he can't stay connected to that source, even if he remembers that it's there. Remembering is not enough. He can't stay connected to that source unless he also follows the laws, the law of source, the laws of oneness, justice, order, divine order. He knows that certain laws apply when considering oneness consciousness. When you consider that everything is connected, there are certain ways that we need to work with nature if we wish to remain open to its power. Nature supports itself. We come from a very intelligent design. We're a part of an intelligent design. And so life supports life. And so if you were thinking that you could know this source and use it for evil, think again. Because whether we admit it or not, we are working for the source because there is only one source. So all, all things are working for self. And it's a really good thing. It's not even a bad thing. So you couldn't if you tried. You couldn't if you tried 
to find that source and manipulate it for evil. You'll only end up fooling yourself. And so these are the main lessons of the magician. First, that we must always remember our connection to this, this source, this infinitely abundant source. And second, that we cannot open up to it and allow it to move through us. It, ca it cannot. It cannot move through us unless we, uh, we attune our frequency. We vibrate to the frequency of source. If we are not like it, if we are not pure, if we do not have good intentions, if we are not going to use that magic for the highest good of the one, our body literally cannot open up to receive its fullest light. We will sometimes receive some of it, but all we'll end up doing with it ultimately is kicking our own ass. Because this is true karma. This is really how it works. There's no escaping it. So whatever energy we think we're getting from source to perform evil, we're only doing that evil to self because there is none other. There is only one. And so, depending our, on our perception, the, the time of how long we will be fooled will be up to us, you know? So why not just avoid that from the beginning and understand the true power of the magician understand how to access it, and remember that it's always there. So we're stepping into the magician. That's what we're preparing right now. That's what we're preparing ourselves for. Woo! And then I felt this other major arcana coming, and here it is. Two out of the four cards major arcana today. The Hierophant, five. And so we're, we're preparing right now to go on a journey that is going to show us how to be this magician in a new way, better than ever before. That's what we're stepping into. Why? Why are we doing that? Why are we needing to cultivate our magician powers? Why are we needing to go through these lessons of the magician in such a big way right now? Why are we needing this reminder, this reminder that the ability to be the magician is there, that we are that. And why are we needing this reminder that the only way to access the fullness of its potential, the fullness of that power, is through purity and having the highest intentions for the highest good of the one? Teacher. The Hierophant is the teacher. This is at the foundation of the reading. This is all about connecting to your heart compass, your heart's compass. There's going to be, I feel this so much, there's, there's already been and there's going to be a lot of confusion around what the truth really is. And again, this is a collective reading, so politics, social media, there's all this false information circulating, all these false truths and opinions and this and that and we're coming to a really chaotic time in our society this unfolding is wild with fires everywhere and just natural disasters everywhere and unnatural disasters everywhere and everybody's arguing about what's happening what's going down who can we trust and why and what should we be doing in these end times, or beginning times, depending on how you look at it, maybe both. So we're learning how to be our own teacher. How to develop our own heart's compass. How to attune our frequency to that of the universal heart's frequency. And if we want to do that in the best way, and if we want to make sure, make sure that the path that we're following is the right one, according to our own heart, a feeling that you can feel that's so real inside your own body, within every cell of your being, if we really want to be able to feel that and be so connected to our own truth, 
which is, I think, what everybody is really seeking right now and always seeking, but especially in a time of such confusion as we're in right now as a collective society, then we must first start with the magician. We have to understand how this thing works. Okay, the magician is the first card of the deck. Some people like to put the zero before the magician. The zero is the fool. And some people say that that one can go anywhere in the deck, the zero. It doesn't matter. Either way, understand that the zero, the fool, is that source, an unlimited trust in that source, infinite source. And the magician is the one who connects to that source and acts as the vessel for that energy to come through as many manifestations on this earth, whatever it is we're, we're wanting or needing to manifest. And so once we do that, we understand why we're here. We start to understand the beginning of this process. If we don't have that foundation, then we can't just all of a sudden find our, our truth, connect to our intuition in a way that discerns through all the, the the false information, just cuts the cords. It can't do that. We can't just skip the, all these preliminary steps. It's very important. We have to understand how energy even works. If we don't have this down, if we don't master the magician archetype first, then we don't maintain awareness that we even have the ability to channel this source energy. We forget who we are. We forget our mission entirely. And when we forget who we are and we forget our mission, how can we be our own teacher? Of course, we're going to be looking around outside of ourselves for the answers. And if what you see outside you know to be a reflection of within, then great. But if you don't do this first, if you don't get this one down first, you will never get this one down. They're in, in this order for a reason. The one comes before the five, of course. And so... We're going to, if we don't, if we don't understand how this works, we forget our purpose, we forget who we are, we forget why we're here, we start asking other people why we're here. And then we don't like what we hear, what they're telling us. Well, what do you expect? You're asking. You're looking. Well, quit looking out there and close your eyes and go within and ask yourself, what is my purpose? Who am I and why am I here? Let me connect back to the magician. Let me, let me backtrack a little bit here so I can remember who the I am and why I'm here. And then it all becomes clear. Okay, there goes the discernment. Now it's coming in. Now my intuition is naturally being cultivated. It's naturally developing because I know who, who I am. And because I know why I'm here. And I know that I'm this magician. And I'm on this earth that is supporting being on this middle path in this body to be the vessel for the above and the below to work as one. And wow, now I get it. Now I can be my own teacher and there's my heart compass because I just needed to have a program to be able to attune that heart compass, to be able to program it into my being. Now, the way I find the answers or the way that I see everything as my teacher, the way I am my own teacher, is because I know who I am and what I'm doing. Therefore, whatever question I have, I consider who I am, and I just consider what I'm doing, and I ask, is this in alignment with who I am? And is this in alignment with what I'm doing? Because I know who the f I am, and I know what the f I'm doing. If I didn't know, then how would I be able to ask those questions? I wouldn't have a proper system to be able to hold my questions up to. I wouldn't have that compass. I wouldn't have that guidance. But knowing who I am and knowing why I'm here sets me up. It sets up that guidance system so that anytime I have a question or anytime I want to see who's telling the truth or, or what information is even freaking relevant right now or what do I say yes to and what do I say no to, all these things can be answered when we consider, okay, who am I? And what am I doing? And does this or does it not support that path of who I am and who I am becoming? And does it support the mission that I'm on here right now? And something that I love to do all the time is ask myself, what am I doing and why am I doing it? 
because those questions apply at any moment. Any moment throughout time and space, you're walking around, pause, ask yourself. Or don't pause, keep walking, whatever, but ask yourself inside your head. No one has to know you're asking. What am I doing and why am I doing it? Oh, I'm going to the grocery store to get some flour because I want to bake these muffins for so-and-so because it will make them feel real good. That's great. Okay, keep going, keep going. That that right there seems so mundane, but it is it is a an example of being connected to that teacher. Always guiding yourself in a way that is safe and for the highest good of the one. Checking in with yourself always. Making sure you know who the hell you are and what the hell you're doing. Because if you know those two things, okay, if you're always paying attention to what you're doing and making sure that the reason you're doing it is in alignment with who your highest self is and what your highest mission is, then you're good to go. And so therefore you're not concerned with how many false prophets there are or what that guy's truth is over there. If you cross paths with that guy and his truth is conflicting, you may have a question to ask your guidance system. Is there something to be done with this individual here? Is it time for me to walk away? You know, and then you'll know what to do because you know your own truth. The point is, you're not concerned with what is true or false because there's a lot of true things and there's a lot of false things out there. You're only concerned with that which comes across your path and how it relates to your solid truth of who you are and why you're here. So first of all, don't be so concerned about all of the untruths out there. You know, as they come up, you'll deal with them. God, there are so many. You're really going to try to go sniff them out when they're just going to keep smacking you in the face anyway? Just wait. You just be patient. The next untruth will pop up. The, ne the next falsity will pop up as an opportunity for you to shine your truth and prove that you're doing this work and that you're not just all talk and that you're really going to develop that guidance system and refer to it. So that's what it's all for. It's all about this right now, the Hierophant and the teacher. And our heart's compass. And you know what? If we're following those signs right now, and we're making sure that the way we are manifesting abundance and the way that we're building this material plane is pure and true then when that fullness of that vision is manifested okay our fullest prosperity is manifested as a collective you're gonna feel so good about it and you're gonna know that hey I followed my heart's compass all the way there and now I'm ready to really do the work as a magician on this earth and I'm really ready to perform my mission and serve as the vessel for the unification of the worlds above and below. I remember that this is why I'm here. And so, I know that everything is my teacher and everyone is my teacher. And it's all, they all, are good teachers, so long as my perception of what is happening there, of what these teachers are, is clear. Okay, so these are really working together. I know why I'm here. I know what I'm here to do. And I'll always be guided appropriately so long as I remember why I'm here. And what I need to do. Remember who you are, Simba. <laughs> but really, remember who you are. And as often as possible, ask yourself, what am I doing and why am I doing it? Just constantly check in with yourself. Make sure that your actions are aligned with your, your thoughts. Make sure that your mission is aligned with your most authentic self. And then you will have the answers wherever you go and whatever you do. You will know which way to go. You will know the next step. You'll know the next thought to have or the next action to take because you know who you are. All right, guys, so first quarter, we're one week in. Thanks for tuning in and watching this video. Thank you for opening up and contributing to this channel today. We're off to a great start. We're deep in the work. Just keep remembering who you are as the magician. Remember that simultaneously you're developing your intuition and your guidance system, your inner teacher, as you remember your mission. 
And from there, we'll manifest the Ten of Pentacles in the future, okay? A true vision of prosperity for one and all. A true cycle of completion. Perhaps that manifestation of prosperity for one and all looks like us all aligning as fellow magicians. It looks like all of us collectively becoming a righteous embodiment of that same archetypal energy. Because at the root, this archetypal energy of the magician that each one of us is embodying, it's all one energy and we're all pulling from that same source. So we're all fellow magicians and that magic that runs in our veins, in our DNA, in our blood, and through each one of our interdimensional bodies, it's all connected. So we can further use that as a channel to connect. We can remember that all of us doing this right now, it's all the same energy that we're feeling. I see it like golden sparkles or something that are all the same in there. They're all in, inside all of us. And that helps to just relax, uh, reflect, connect, create, uh, you know, create a an opportunity to connect even further visually. That's, that's where the true connection happens anyway, inside, when you close your eyes. Not looking at this illusion of separation around us. When you close your eyes and you think, hey, we're all accessing the same energy right now. We're all pulling from that same source. You can really feel that. You can really feel that. So perhaps this is what we're doing as far as collectively manifesting that vision of prosperity. It looks like us all activating a high embodiment of that magician energy so that collectively we access the heart's compass so that all together we connect to this energy, the true teacher. And as a collective, we honor that teacher, the true teacher within each one. This is powerful. That is the prosperity that we're working towards. So if you can in any way refine your vision, right? Because we're pausing right now. Before we get to the 10, we're at the 9. Right now, let's make a commitment to each other that we're going to refine our vision in the smallest of ways. Perhaps it looks the same, what our vision of prosperity was. We're like, hey, there was nothing wrong with my vision of prosperity. Um, it was pure and it was right and I deserve it. Okay, but... What's coming in is this little bit of information. We want to refine that vision simply by adding. It's like adding an extra spell around this vision that we've been working on, okay? Just insert this little extra piece into your vision. If you can, if you're willing to meet me on this mission, insert into your vision of prosperity for yourself and those around you the idea that this prosperity on an unseen realm involves us connecting in that magician energy, facing each other as the magician, and as a society, tuning into the truth, the same one truth, bowing to each other's inner teacher, knowing that that teacher is the same one hierophant, the same one archetypal primordial energy pool at the foundation of all of creation. So you can still have whatever your vision of prosperity was that we've been working on for all these, these you know, last couple cycles here. That Ten of Pentacles. Look it up if, you're, if you don't remember. Google Ten of Pentacles. So whatever your vision was in regards to the Ten of Pentacles, all I'm asking is, hey, whoever's willing, meet me on this mission. Add a layer to that meditation, to that visualization. And it should be easy. It should, it should be able to, to flow with anyone's vision because it's on the unseen realm. Unless you were thinking of the unseen realm as well, which, wow, like, uh, kudos to you if you did. Um, and if you did, guess what? There are infinite dimensions that we can play in. So I'm asking you to add another unseen dimension to this meditation. Um, and I'm going to do it too, where I add in there a visual of all of us connecting to this foundational magician this, at the same one source. And all of us pulling from that same source. And I see us as this like magician, you know, beyond these faces and these bodies. I see us as almost like this image of the magician multiplied. And they're all standing in a circle facing each other. It's a very powerful vision 
to invoke, by the way, because these symbols and these colors and the way that they're all drawn is very intentional and very specific. So if you see, for example, the white and red garb there, and you see a bunch of these guys standing in a circle facing each other, let's say, in the dark, maybe there's a light coming through the center um, from a high ceiling or something. That's a powerful, powerful vision to have. Okay, so I'm offering that as inspiration, but you can do it however you want. I'm seeing the magician multiplied and standing in a circle facing each other in this powerful room like I described. Um, and then from there, I am seeing that we are collectively accessing the heart, the, the universal heart compass, right? So I'm going to see a heart that magically appears in the center of these magicians. And from the heart, it turns into a lotus, and it opens up, right? Maybe there's a lotus at the base of the heart. Maybe there's a lotus that's closed, yeah. Okay, so I'm refining the vision. Bear with me. This is just inspiration. You guys can do it however you wish, of course, when, as you do this. Um, so it's the magician standing in a circle, and in the center is a lotus, and the lotus opens up, and there is the heart, and then the heart splits open, and in the center is the Hierophant. That's how I'm going to do the meditation. You can do it however you want, if you wish to join me. The point is, I'm, I'm just asking that you add in an unseen layer into your vision of prosperity when you meditate. And may that, that vision of prosperity include us all together accessing this one same archetypal energy of the magician. Remembering our purpose and why we're here so that we may collectively reach one ideal, one vision of what the truth of the heart is. So then that vision becomes our law and order, becomes our vision of justice, becomes our code that we all refer to, a guidance system that we refer to when we have any question of what to think, what to say, or what to do. And in this way, the alignment that follows is the gift and manifestation of that same Ten of Pentacles energy. I just felt called to pull a card right now just to close it up. Um, this is a Ten. And it's not pentacles. It's cups. And it came up yesterday and it came up the day before. And this energy is obviously very pre present. Understand that the tens are all related. The ten of cups and that symbol of prosperity on this material plane. What is that on the unseen plane? It's the ten of cups. This is what it looks like on the unseen realm. You know, in regards to that material manifestation of the Ten of Pentacles. What's going on in the Unseen Realm? A cycle of completion of the heart. Because if we're reaching that completion in its fullness on the material plane, we've got to know that that's reflecting all of the other dimensions. The emotional body, it's reflecting emotional completion. So therefore, the potential of the Ten of Pentacles really is intertwined with the Ten of Cups. The more deeply we feel fulfilled in our hearts, the more deeply we will value those material manifestations when they come. So may our heart's fulfillment be one with the fulfillment of the heart of the one, of the divine. So that our heart's desires are pure and powerful. So that when they manifest on the material plane, those desires as manifestations become things that are for the highest good of the one. May we make sure that what our heart is yearning for is so worth it. It's so worth the work. So that when it comes, when the thing comes that we wanted so badly, it's something that can go beyond the grave because only those things are the things that are truly of any value in this life. All right, guys, that was the first quarter. That was awesome. Thanks for tuning in to the first quarter reading. 
Um, I am doing readings full time right now. I am doing one-on-one -on -one lessons with these archetypes and how to access this guide guidance system for yourself. Essentially what you learn is uh, how to use the tarot to access the universal mind. So this work is beyond the tarot. Archetypal activation is beyond the tarot. And that's the work that I'm doing full time now. So if anybody's interested in working with me, go ahead and private message me. Um, you can also find me on youtube.com slash Rebecca Magic. We do these readings four times a month based on the cycles of the moon. Uh, ultimately, it doesn't have anything to do with the moon other than that the moon is a measure of time, reflecting a much deeper unfolding, a monthly cycle that we all experience individually and collectively. So, happy manifesting that Ten of Pentacles, which ultimately, remember guys, at its root, that true prosperity looks like us all activating that magician, the remembrance of who we are and why we're here so that we can come to a collective ideal as far as what the highest truth of the heart is. So then, we can only return back to that same mission as the magician, who we are and why we're here, and fight for that truth, and manifest for that truth, and be a vessel for that truth to do what we are here to help it do. That's why we're here. I'll see you for the full moon next week when we'll talk about the whole picture and everything that is revealed under that fullest light. The final pieces of the puzzle will come together then, so that'll be really exciting. I look forward to that with you guys. Shabbat Shalom. I miss doing the candle lighting with you guys. If, if you haven't seen that before, let me know if you're interested in seeing that. Um, and I'd be happy to light the candles live again soon. If not tonight, then maybe next Shabbat. We'll see. All right. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. I'll see you next week. Shalom.